Well, the, you were the Millennium President. I suppose Millenniums are, are always smart, but you were part of that generation of Presidents that lived through all the false hopes of BSE. There was a, a desperation yeah. then to try and get beef markets owned again. Uh -huh. that's, that's correct, yeah. Uh, BSE was in full swing uh, during my total, total period in the presidential team. And uh, by the time I came in in 98, we were starting to look at uh, an exclusive deal for Northern Ireland. And uh, we uh, had lobbied in London and we lobbied in Brussels, who were uh, in very, very supportive. But uh, all those things became a false dawn, really. And uh, we finally had to finish up uh, just towing the line with the rest of the kingdom. And was there a sense that other parts of the UK didn't want us to get special treatment. They didn't want us to be seen as better than anywhere else. Oh, of course, that was that was the real problem. That uh, the the government in London really couldn't uh, figure out how to distinguish. Uh, our rate of BSE was minimal, really, really minimal. But uh, unfortunately. They seen it that uh, there had to be equilibrium throughout the kingdom, and that those false dawns uh, really became what they were. But it, was it unfortunate in many ways through that, that whole period that the union and, and farming politics and farmers got focused on lifting the beef ban? It was seen as the the, the, the ultimate salvation, and yeah. really, when it happened, it, it wasn't as big a deal as we thought. Well, the the, the there were very professional finishers who had uh, continental cattle uh, that had a tremendous market uh, throughout Europe and suddenly that market just simply disappeared overnight and they were left in some cases with lots of cattle with nowhere to go and certainly from a financial point of view a very serious crisis for them and uh, we were we were attempting to do something for them, really, uh, but uh, unfortunately, it didn't all work out. But BSE also triggered the development of the, the supermarket business, or focus on the, the big UK supermarkets. Yeah. In many ways, that's been healthy for the industry, and it inspired you to go into the, 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 the retail end with the ice cream business. Yeah, yeah. The uh, yes, yeah, so if you think back, if you think back. A quarter of a century really 25 years uh, we have come from a situation where where uh, beef beef finishers were almost in a world market and certainly in a wider european market uh, you can think back to the strap line of green fields uh, in, in in the netherlands as being almost a flagship brand and uh, that disappeared so the ship had to turn and the ship doesn't turn easily, as I have found out in, in our commercial venture. Uh, it, it can take a lot of time and a lot of lobbying, and uh, you can have a meeting this morning, and it could be a phone call in nine months, a year's time, uh, when you've long since forgotten uh, almost what you, what you promised, and uh, suddenly it comes good. But uh, that ship, that ship took a fair length of time to turn, and we're now, as certainly in the beef processing end, uh, very firmly in the hands of the major multiples, um, being benchmarked uh, probably at a lower price than most of the rest of the kingdom. Uh, one to gain that business, and secondly to hold it. But scary when you look back at how good the beef price was. When we were in Europe, when we were with Albert Hein in Holland yeah. uh, in 1996, it took a long time before we got beef prices up to that two pound seventy five mark that we had. That's right. Yes, yeah. If you uh, if you run the rule of inflation over those 25 years, uh, we're certainly no better off, and probably probably marginally worse off uh, with the beef prices we're receiving at the moment.